Hey y'all, this time on a special DerbyCon edition of Hack Fry from Louisville, Kentucky. We're joined by Skip of Passing the Hash to talk Windows Off tokens. Then Mubix from Room 362 shares his unprivileged network map and utility. And Chris Gates of Connell Ownage farms LinkedIn and his Rolls Incident Response Team. All that and more this time on Hack 5. Yeehaw! This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Dice.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Tech and Lust. Yes, and we just got back from DerbyCon and it was so much fun. I had a blast at that conference. It's always fun to go to the Midwest for a hacker conference. My favorite part is the grits and the sweet tea. I always get grits and sweet tea every time we go to Louisville. Uh, this is it's definitely a good crowd there. In fact, a <laughs> lot of people we met there, it was like their first hacker conference. I feel like DerbyCon is really accessible. So if you're in the area and you didn't go, need to go next year. We'll be there. Yeah, it's going to be definitely. a lot of fun. Yeah, it felt like it grew quite a bit this year, and it was so organized. They really upgraded a lot this year. And I, I like the white derbies that everybody was wearing. Yeah, yeah, the derby hats. Yeah. Uh, dude, you know, what else was an awesome show was Dual Core. Our friend uh, AB of Dual Core was there. C64, I guess he didn't, he didn't make it out to this one, but but he did, uh, he did an awesome show with Remy. Uh, probably yeah, one of the got... best dual core performances I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. Wow. I've seen a lot of dual core performances and yeah, this one was this one was up there and Remy is always kicking butt. I like that he sang a lot of his songs from the new CD, all the things. All They're the so things. They're so good. They're so good. Yes. I uh, I keep every time I see it, it's like I read it and I'm like all the thongs? Like, for some reason <laughs> that's where my head goes and I'm all like Darren. Anyway, I'm just, get your head out of the gutter. No, it's just whatever. So well, I just kind of want like 80 to get on stage and start like flinging thongs at people. <laughs> you know, hack all the thongs. Hack like, anyway. all the thongs, kill all the humans. That makes yeah. no sense. <laughs> I know, it's not supposed to. <laughs> well, check it out. We got a great show this week. We've got uh, we got Skip coming on. We got Chris Gates coming on. Mubix is coming on. We've got some really fantastic stuff. Hearing all about ways to troll incident response teams, about doing like um, information gathering for your next pen test, some cool Windows utilities. I know you guys like those for the uh, the pen test. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's get right into it. We got a packed but... show today. And first off, we have Mubix, and we'll be right back after a quick break. Dice.com is the career hub for tech. For over 20 years, they've been helping connect technology professionals with the highly targeted competitive jobs that they seek. And not only that, they even have a sense of humor because finding a job could still be fun. Take a look at this clip from the Dice.com Tech Job Mega Show to see what we mean. Safety first. Pretty cool stuff, right? Be sure to watch the full two minute clip over at youtube.com slash dice. And you can browse Dice's huge database of job postings right now to find the perfect tech job for you. Go to dice.com today to see for yourself. So, um, Rob, Fuller, is it? Let me just make sure I'm getting your name right. Uh, I'm here with Mubix of the <laughs> Mubix clan. Yeah, it's a clan now. <laughs> <laughs> How is the Mubix clan? Doing good. Doing yeah? good. Yeah. Nice. And so what are you, what are you uh, breaking here? At Derby uh, not really breaking. So uh, Chris and I uh, did a talk where we had a bunch of stuff. Like last year, we talked about theory and what we think should happen. What, you know, we thought pen testers should do better or, or get, you know. And today we just, or yeah, yesterday we released uh, just cool stuff that we've been doing. So the we fun, got all of the tricks. Yeah, we got all of the physical, philosophical stuff out of there and just did, you know, a rat or a dash to everything we thought was cool. Well, that's what you're kind of like known for though, is those uh, fun party tricks, the, the like Mubix's thumb drive, like what's on Mubix's thumb drive this week, you know? Like, right. like what's on it? So, um, Some new stuff, right? Yeah, so NetView and Ditto. Uh, we released NetView and Ditto. So NetView, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, so Net space View lists all the computers. 
Um, yeah. And last year at DerbyCon, we released a Metasploit module that did the same thing, but would give, gather the IP addresses too. And how would um, it do that? So it just did two API calls. So it got all the computers. Because normally doesn't that just give you the host names? Yes, it only gives you the host names. And so how that was useful on a pen test like last year was that you could say, oh, I'm on the 192.168.5 network, and everyone else in this domain is on the 192.168.6 network. That's why I can't scan and get anything, sure, right? Sure. So it's a really easy way to do that. But the Metasploit module was so slow because it would literally have to go over whatever connection type you had, read memory and for every host you did. So it's back and forth for every single host. So I got fed up and just wrote it in C. Nice, uh, as you do. <laughs> So uh, it, it's the same tool, except now it's written in C as a Windows 32 binary? Yeah, and it does a whole lot more. So one of the interesting features of Windows API is all of the tools that are out there are designed for admins. And the Windows API has a bunch of different levels for each function that you ask, well, for a lot of the functions that you ask for. And since admins want as much information as possible, which makes sense, um, they go for the admin-only uh, level. Yeah, just run it as administrator. You'll be fine. Right. Which is great, but I don't always have admin, right? So I went through a bunch of APIs and saw that there are certain levels that only require normal user access or even null session access to get that information, right? So I put all of that in where now NetView, or um, uh, as we call it, netview.exe, uh, gives you, if it's a SQL server, if it's a domain controller, mm. the version of the um, OS, um, the, com the comment, the all the shares, including admin shares. So if they have a G drive attached to it and they're sharing it out automatically, that admin share, even if it's a dollar Yeah, um, dollar share, share. Right, shows up in there. So that and sessions. So a session is considered anything where someone is logging in remotely to that system. So like an SMB session or whatever. So if if a uh, corporation has like all of your home directories on a uh, file share, all those sessions for everyone who's logged in is there. So you can trace it back to the actual workstations that they're on, right? And you can see that as just a regular user? As a regular on user. On the network? Yep. Now, it also gets it's... logged on users. So anyone who's Anybody locally logged on to locally, your machine? No, anyone who's locally logged on to the machine that's occurring. So this does it across the whole domain. Oh, so this does query everything. It is chatting on the network. It is a little bit chatty, but it's 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 fast. Yeah. So and and it does and win, all of normal stuff, Windows API calls. So and the, all of this stuff with normal calls without privileges. Without privileges, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, what what inspired you to go about doing that? Like, because what are the different API calls that you're able to use and not able to use, and what what aren't you getting that you could be? With admin versus non-admin? Yeah. Sounds uh, like you're pretty much getting the farm. I mean, what yeah, else could it, you have gotten? It does get more information. Like, okay, so the logged on one gets exactly where they're logged on from um, or as or I, I don't remember exactly the differences because I just used the ones that were there. But there are there are more, there isn't more information in each one of them. Uh, net, uh, I don't remember them. Sorry. No, no worries. But like, it sounds like it paints you a pretty good picture of the network without having to escalate privileges, yeah. which is pretty fantastic. Yep. And those are all regular API calls, non-escalated. Uh, and so for the most part, it shouldn't really trigger anything because yeah. these are stuff that's just spamming out of Windows all the time. Yeah, right? this is definitely everything. Everything I'm calling is already on your noisy network as is. So yeah. it's not going to be detected by AV hips. It's not going to stop it because a domain controller itself has to do all of these. This is like the equivalent of like you double clicking on like network neighborhood and right clicking yep. on every server and hitting properties yep. over and over and over and just recursively. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were like, wow, this person's really curious. curious. <laughs> yeah. I think we got a hacker. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. Uh, so that's, um, uh, that's NetView. NetView. And you said the other one was Ditto. Yeah, Ditto. Um, so. Ditto is, is, I got fed up with having, like, so for persistence, you normally have to drop a binary of some sort so that it runs somehow. So that binary, if you, if you generate it in Metasploit, has this stupid little icon that anything without an icon shows up as. the blue and white one. Right, it's the blue and white one. I'm a DOS executable. Right. And if you throw it on someone's desktop, and the reason you don't throw it on someone's desktop is because it's, it's blaringly obvious what that... that Bob.exe? That's, that's not supposed to be there, right? It's always Bob.exe. Yes, it is always Bob.exe. <laughs> um, 
So what I did was created Ditto, and Ditto, all it does is, um, if you're familiar with Resource Hacker, Resource Hacker is a great little tool that allows you to copy icons from different places um, and change out details about stuff. Well, Ditto automates all of that in, for one specific reason, to take A's, A, binary A's um, information and resources into another binary. So I'd take, and you can do this locally before you upload it, right? So it's, this is not, does not have that, to be on yeah. target, but it works on target as well. So you say, hey, Adobe Reader, I want all of your resources. I'm gonna throw it in this binary. And so aside from the icon, what, what kind of resources are you talking about and how would I normally see these as a regular user? So you right click and go to properties and you can see the copyright, uh, the full name, who made the binary and all that stuff. This is just the metadata. Yep, all the metadata is automatically copied with the icon. Nice, and so since you've got the icon and since it has the same exact copyright information, all the stuff that you would expect to see, the idea is then you apply that to your interpreter or whatever evil right. binary you happen to have. Right, so this doesn't really get past, this is not time stomp, this doesn't get past any forensics person or malware, it's just meant to get past that initial, like, oh, there's something new on my desktop, oh, it's probably something, you know, corporate throw on there. Instead of, oh, there's a black or black and blue, th or white and blue thing on there. Yeah, I always like to go with the, uh, the, the, the bomb icon. Right. It's built into the Windows DLLs. There you go. That, that was, you know, not conspicuous whatsoever. <laughs> right, so I mean, it's really, it's really easy to use. It just says source destination. The only problem is, do not switch the two. Oh yeah, oops, so you can actually I've taken over your Adobe Reader or whatever? Yeah, so I've, I took uh, uh, evil binary and source and uh, notepad in the destination and it rewrites the whole resources. This is like that one time I was cloning that server and DD IF equals or is it OF equal? Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been there. Uh, Windows kind of complains a lot when Notepad all of a sudden has its binary changed. Really? Yeah. It doesn't like that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Poor Notepad. It's okay. That's awesome. It was a VM. Yeah. So is this all up at Room 362? Um, no. It, well, it will be, but um, right now it's on GitHub. So GitHub slash Movix slash Ditto or GitHub slash Movix slash uh, Netview. Nice. Yep. What else is new in the in the room of the 362? Oh, um, one other thing we talked about in the in the talk was um, taking internal only attacks like NetBIOS spoofing or WPAD man in the milling or stuff like that and t throwing it external. So when a like outside of the domain? Yeah. So why? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, if, like, if if I get a fish yeah. right and I get one interpreter session in there. I don't have the ability to do WPAD. I don't have the ability to do all these fun little tricks that you can do internal, right? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the cool things about Windows is if it asks you for a share. So if I say, hey, give me share three, and you don't have share three on your, on your system. I'm going to go say I'm an anteater. Right. And then, then my, my Windows system says, can you give it to me over WebDAV? So oh. then on... on so you're victim one, yes. you attached to the, right? So you listen on 80, because I've made you listen on 80, yep. and now I can talk over WebDAV externally, and I will auto automatically authenticate to you, because you're on my local network, I trust you, right? Dude. So uh, port proxy, which is built into Windows firewall, mm -hmm. um, is just a port forwarder. And the great thing about it is it can, it can go it's from- like proxy chains? Um, no, it's, it has nothing to do with proxying. It's just a port forwarder. Oh, okay. So, and essentially it's a proxy, but it's, it's a port forwarding proxy. Um, so what it does is says, hey, um, if I ask you for something on 80, you're gonna take that request, automatically do it to some whatever target it is, and then it'll come back to me through you. Nice. Right, so the cool thing is it does IPv4 to V6, or V6 to V4, or V6 to V6. So if I have, Teradot tunneling, and we talked about yeah, Teradot tunneling. Yeah. Using that for if, all sorts of fun persistence, right? Right. right. So if you have Teradot, so that's already jumping past the firewall, mm -hmm. and I say port proxy 80 to this IPv6 address on 80, then I can listen on that IPv6 address out there on the internet, and I will auto-authenticate and skip over your firewall completely. Right, so it's it's port proxying from V4 yeah. between us sure, sure. to V6. And so you just use that machine as a relay, as a complete relay, yeah, to turn all of your internal cool attacks like WPAD, NBNS spoofing, and all that externally. 
And so you don't even have to launch them from that machine because right. it's now become a proxy for you. Right. Dude, I love that. Yep. That's brilliant. And that's just built right into Windows? Yep, it's built into Windows. Thank is, you, is, Microsoft. <laughs> Again, is, it, is there like an easy way to implement it? Is there like a tool that kind of flunked like? Because a lot of times you're like, oh, my brain hurts when you start thinking about all the routes and the way that things are going. Yeah, it's just an NSH, like straight from the Windows prompt, an NSH port proxy. Oh, that's it? That's okay. it. All right, well, that doesn't sound complicated at all. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> so uh, Chris Gates, my co-speaker, um, he kind of got mad at me when I started blogging about the stuff we we're going to talk about. So all of my blogs for this, for what we talked about at the con, are ready. <laughs> They're just, just ready to them all. Yeah, probably nice. in the next few weeks. Awesome. Well, then pay attention to room362.com. That's where I go to find out what's new in the Mubix verse. <laughs> That's like the Joss Whedon verse, but it's a little different. I don't like that reference. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> well, you want me to try that one again? No, it's fine. Okay, well, go to room362.com and show some love to Mubix. Yeah. It's good to see you, dude. Always. <laughs>